Hey everyone, Steve with Entering Into Space, back here in the uh, Astro office. Like I said, you can put Astro in front of everything. I was doing a video, re I was doing a video. I was doing an image, reprocessing an image, because that's what you do. That's what you do when the skies are horrible or the moon's out. You reprocess, practice, practice, practice. And so anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed the reprocess of the Veil Complex, a wide field image I did with the TPO 180. Yeah, so much so that I wanted to do a video uh, because I noticed a lot of people, and I used to struggle with it, when you're doing your 135 millimeter Sigma camera lens images, you're gonna get a lot of stars, like a lot of stars. So what I want to show you is kind of a recap on the last video, but uh, a little, a little more in depth on how to push the stars back and bring the nebula forward. Or is it like this? One of those gestures. So you can already see I've already been working on it. So let's get into the computer here over to PixInsight and Photoshop, and I'll show you how to create more depth in your astrophotography images. Stay tuned. All right, so as you know, we're here in PixInsight and just to show you what I was talking about before, this is the first attempt that I did last summerish, early fallish. Um, it's a nice looking image, but you can see, if you guys know you're shooting, uh, you know, this was 180 millimeters, if you're shooting 135 millimeters, uh, mega wide field, the wider it is, the more stars. And you can get a star field so dense that you could hardly see your, you know, the target, the nebula. And this one was okay, it turned out okay. But redoing it, let's just leave it up for comparison. Uh, this is the new version. Yeah, same data, exact same data, just processed uh, in an entirely different way. And I was able to get a lot more uh, nebulosity out of it too. So let me show you what I did to to go from this to this. Okay. All right, so here's our data. And by the way, this is also gonna do another recap of the hydrogen sulfur, excuse me, hydrogen oxygen HOO, ho, ho, uh, data, how to combine those two, because that's all this is. This is hydrogen and this is oxygen of the veil complex. Uh, the first thing we gotta do is crop it. Let's go here to uh, process and we're going to go to geometry, dynamic crop. I'm just going to hit the reset button. What that does, it draws a box around the whole nebula. So let's shrink that in. You know, as I say in doing these processing videos, the smaller the image, the faster some of these things go. So we're just trying to get the main nebula here. We can get some of this outer faint stuff so I can show you how I brought that out. Uh, right about there. I like that. So let's drag the instance off. So that box and exactly where that box is in the frame has now been saved to the instance. Let's uh, turn down our volume Beep. Bonk. and drag that instance and just drop it on the image and you've cropped. Let's open up the oxygen, do the same. Now we got a wide field image and you can definitely tell we have a gradients in here. So we're gonna spend some time uh, going through the process of dynamic background extraction. And you can find that here in background modelization and the processes tab, dynamic background extraction. So let's make that image a little bigger. We click the image and what that does is it links the image to the tool. And we're gonna start out with the tolerance. That's the first thing you wanna set. I'm just going to set it to 1.5. I'm going to increase the smoothing factor to 0.65. I'm going to drop down here in sample generation. I'm going to leave that uh, sample radius at 28. And this is a wide field image. I'm going to do a bunch. I'm going to do oodles. And uh, I'm going to click generate. And as you can see, because the gradient we had is so heavy, that we don't have any samples up in this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to, have to boost. We're going to, have to be more tolerant. So we're going to boost that to 2.5. Click generate. 
and it appears that that did it. Now our samples are a bit large. You see, no matter where I move it, I'm on a star here. Um, so let's lower that down to maybe 22. Resize all and click generate again because we want to make sure our samples are all the way up on the edge. And that's pretty good. So now it's just a matter of moving these sample boxes, the tedious work of moving the sample boxes off of the nebulosity. And it's this little task right here that gives me hope that artificial intelligence will never take over our lives because this is a human touch. Score one for the humans. Um, okay. Yeah. Take that, Elon. All right, so I'm gonna just go through and move all these samples off any stars. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Actually, I never went anywhere. I just was really quiet for a while. Uh, all right, so there is, if you look up here, it says there's 86 sample points. And I think I dang near moved every one of them. Um, but you can, if you want to just confirm, you can click on the first one, see one of 86, and you can just cycle through. You're going to get a few stars. See, you can find, uh, where's the green one? Where's the green one? Oh, it's right here. It's kind of moving around. The further away you are, the harder it is. Just don't want any you don't want any sample points that are almost all black because they are over top of a star or nebula. See that one right there? I missed that one. See? See how that helps? We're just cycling through. We're going to get a few stars, but it's fine. All right. See, that's another way of making sure that you check every dang one of them. <coughs> kind of rednecky today, huh? Okay, so now that we have all our sample points, we're going to come down here to target image correction. Um, we're going to choose division. And we are not going to want to see the background. So we're going to say discard background model. Okay. Hit the check mark. All right. Do an auto stretch on it. And ooh, nice and flat. Let's minimize it. Actually. Let's take that big old long name out of there. One more I. O I I I. O three. Right. All right. So we did a lot of work. We don't want to lose that. Let's drag that instance off. Where all those boxes are. We're gonna close that old image. Open up our HA. Double click on the instance. It places all the sample points. Now. There's a lot more HA in this image. So see, when you used, like I just did, I used my um, oxygen as a template. But what I think I'm going to do is go back through and make sure I'm not on any heavy hydrogen signal. Okay. So, uh, intermission. I had to move quite a few samples actually. So, you know, in hindsight, probably what I should have done was done this image first, and then I would have known I'd been safe on the oxygen. But, you know, did it backwards. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and hit the check mark. See what it looked like. Do an auto stretch. Now, you see how it's kind of gray and we've got some really dark areas in here? That means I need to move a sample point. So let's close that in. Let's close that down. Um, let's double check this. Got a sample point in here somewhere on some nebulosity. Let's go through here and check our sample points again. Make sure. Hmm. I think we're good. I don't see anything egregious. Still looking. Got some really good signal. Shot this with the uh, little TPO 180 ultra wide. The TPO 180 ultra wide has been replaced with a new scope. Hint, hint. New product review video on the way. Okay. I think we're good. 
And one thing I can do if, you know, if, if you had solver and you want to make sure you're saving all these new changes, you can take that instance off. You can drag it over the top of the old one. It'll say, yes, I want to replace it. And then we can hit the check mark. Still kind of dark in there, but I think we're good. So let's minimize it. Actually, double click on it. Double click on the tab. Change that to HA. All right. Boom. Let's close the tool. We're going to close the old image. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, pixel math to combine these two. So we're going to hit process pixel math, pixel math. Pretty easy. Uh, we're going to uncheck a single RGBK expression. And we're going to check this, uh, click that box, and that puts us into the expression editor. Uh, so the hydrogen, or yeah, the red tab, we're going to put all of our uh, hydrogen data. So we just double click. We're going to go over here to the blue tab. We're going to put all of our oxygen data. And we're going to come to the green tab. We're going to write a formula. And I didn't come up with this formula. I got it from Christopher Gomez. I don't know where he got it from. You'll go out to ask him. <laughs> anyway, so that's an open parentheses. Double click the hydrogen times 0 0.04 and close parentheses plus open parentheses. Double click the oxygen. So it puts it in the equation um, times squiggly line. Please somebody tell me what that is. Uh, 0 0.01 close parentheses. So basically what that's going to do is going to provide us a mixture of the hydrogen and the oxygen in the green channel. Simple as that. Okay, let's click OK to that. Uh, we're going to go in here to the destination tab. And we're going to create a new image. And we want the color space to be RGB. And for order for this to work, you have to open up one of the images that you already have. And you're going to hit the apply button. It's going to give us this image here. We can do an auto stretch to see if we like the colors. The channels are linked, so god awful. Let's unlink the channels and restretch it. I'm pretty cool with that. Uh, you know, a higher number is going to give me more yellows in the red. Um, we'll probably run some SCNR to get rid of some of that green, but obviously we've got a really jacked up background, so let's fix that. So let's, uh, let's just minimize pixel math. Push it right there. So here's our image. And if you've watched this channel before, typically you'll see me do a lot of work to the luminance, but not today. Not today. We're going to just, we're going to do everything to this image here. It's going to be our image. So like I said, when I had the channels linked, it looks like that. So I'm going to unlink the channel. I'm going to find a portion of the background that doesn't have any nebula looks pretty normal i'm going to check this little uh new preview box here i'm going to draw a box right there it doesn't have to be super huge you just don't want it on any nebulosity if you can help it uh, so we'll come up here to process color calibration background neutralization we're going to neutralize the background so we want to find that preview by checking this little box right here and we're going to go to image 13 preview one, click OK, and then drag and drop. And this should even out our background. Whoa, that's going to happen. Don't freak out. Just kill the auto stretch and reapply it. And your image should be good. So we can close background neutralization. If we link the channels, see, big time difference. We'll leave them unlinked. Uh, so let's do some uh, linear noise reduction. Noise reduction before we stretch. We're going to open up multi scale linear transform. And, you know, I already have this tool set. You're more than welcome to copy down the settings of the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The layers. It's noise reduction and layers. So layer one is getting more noise reduction than layer four. As simple as that. We're going to use this tool to apply a mask though. So in order to do that, we have to get rid of the auto stretch. 
we're going to check linear mask and we're going to change this to lightness the target and we're going to check preview mask and we're going to do a real-time preview so um oh and let me show you one thing if this is set to luminance sometimes your mask will look like this and you'll be like i don't see anything like i know there's nebula there it's an inverted mask but i found out that the best way to see the nebula is to make sure you check lightness and sometimes if you've messed with this and you have the amplification all the way over here you're going to be like sometimes it'll be if you've got a lot of nebula this whole screen will be black and you think the tool's not even working just make sure you you push down your amplification so all we want to do is is adjust the amplification i've said that three times way more times than i thought i would say amplification today uh and I like that. I just want to hit the highlights, you know. We've got our stars, and this is our smoothness. Like it. So let's close the real time preview. Let's uncheck preview mask. Apply an auto stretch. And then we just drag and drop. And like I said, the new and improved workflow is to kill the auto stretch and manually stretch this, but just barely. You know, we want to maintain the photographical integrity of our data. I made that up. <laughs> All right, so let's open up histogram transformation. Uh, let's reset the tool. We're going to do a real time preview so we see what we're doing here. And we're going to hit that little check mark and it's going to give us our histogram which it's a linear file which means all of our data is squeezed into this narrow little band here all the way to the left so now we want to widen that histogram and what we're doing when we're doing this is we're looking at our stars and we want to see those stars get to a point by eye that we like and then we're going to pull them Okay, so let's stretch it one more time. We're getting those stars. See our histogram is starting to get a little wider, so we just move our black point over. And every time you do this, your histogram is going to get a little wider and it's going to reveal more of your signal. All right, so right about there. I think we're getting really close to stopping. Push that down a little bit. I've also found that uh, both StarNet and Star Exterminator work much better when you're pulling your stars out at this stage of the game, as opposed to fully stretching it and trying to pull them out. You leave a lot less artifacts. I think I'm done stretching i've got a good start feel i can darken that up just a little bit cool <laughs> let's minimize the tool um let's go ahead and uh right click on that and say delete delete the preview we're going to pull our stars out so we're going to come here to process and we're going to come to object recognition star exterminator we do want to generate a star image because we're going to put them back in. Um, okay, so I'll see you when the stars are out. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was looking at those dang reels. You guys ever get into those? It's like you click on it and then you scroll for seven hours. Anyway. Uh, all right, so stars are out. Ooh, man, oh man, oh man, that look good. That look good right there. I guarantee that made me Cajun that looks so good. Anyway, all right, so we're not going to use our histogram transformation tool anymore. We're going to use curves. And I think we probably got a little more green in our image than I like. So we're going to open up SCNR. We're going to push that probably about 50%. Drag and drop, and that should uh, boost that blue tone. Yeah. Okay. So open up curves. 
we're going to do a real time preview. We're going to find our black point, which is in here, right? We're going to hold it down, put it in a headlock. We're going to come right ahead of it. Stretch. Boom. Look at that. Would you look at that? All right, let's do it again. Black point in here. Hold it down. Come right ahead of it. Stretch and stretch. Shim on. Let's boost a little uh, saturation. And the C component here, it acts like vibrance. I'm just going to boost that just a little bit. I like it. I like it. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to do that anymore, though. Uh, okay, let's go back to our RGB setting. Let's crank in one time. Roll the mouse, mouse wheel back. What it does is zooms in on this linear line here. Uh, find our black point. Our levels are still really good. Grab them right about here. Pull it down just a little bit. Come right ahead of it. And lift. I sound like I'm a yoga instructor or something. And we're going to lift and stretch. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're, you know, we're not blowing the image out. We've got some pretty good uh, data in here. We've got some 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 of this red nebulosity in here. See it right in here. And what we can do is click our red channel and find out where that nebulosity is. So we can pin that red channel down right about there. And we can come ahead of it and lift. That really just boosted those really fainter uh, red signal areas. Let's go back into RGB. So if we feel like we're getting things a little too bright in the higher signal areas, we can figure out what those are. You know, right about here. So we can pin it. Uh, we can find out where our black point is, which is right here. We can pin it down. And then now if we just want to maybe catch just that, see that faint nebulosity right in there? And all I'm doing is just click it on the screen. So if we really want to just really pinpoint that, instead of having this be a smooth curve, we can come over here to a linear interpolation curve check it we're going to come right ahead of that pin mark and just lift right there i don't want to get carried away you see what that's doing is it's actually just really uh, being more precise about what we're stretching and what we're lifting up so i like it um we've got good nebulosity We've separated it from the background. We started to reveal some of that uh, fainter signal area, especially some of that nebulosity, that hydrogen nebulosity that streams off of the Eastern Veil Nebula. Uh, so let's go here and save it. We're gonna save as, uh, we could just say right here, image 13, but we wanna save it as a TIFF. Uh, save it, save it as a 16 bit. <clears throat> Cool, and then let's open up our stars. Let me check those stars out. I felt like those stars had a little green in them we probably should have knocked out. So let's open up SCNR. Let's get a little more aggressive with that. Let's drag and drop that on the stars. Let's zoom back in here. Yeah, looks a lot better. All right, so file, save as, uh, image 13, see, image 14. Wow, what a coincidence. So if we're still as a TIFF, we're gonna save it, 16-bit, click OK. Cool. Minimize those two, and let's open up 
Photoshop. Go to my 10 terabyte hard drive that's almost filled up. My goodness. TPO 180, Fail Complex, Image 13, and Image 13 stars. We're gonna go in here to Image 13. We like it. Um, let's create a copy. Drag it down over the plus sign. Let's go in here to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And we're gonna to go to the basic tab and we're gonna boost our vibrance just a little bit. We're gonna dehaze it just a little bit. And we're gonna get some clarity. Groovy. Let's merge that down. Let's make another copy. Let's go ahead and do our noise reduction on our background here. Let's go back in here to the filter tab. Um, camera off filter. This time we're going to go to the detail tab and we're going to boost our our loop like our luminance noise reduction which is what this is i mean we can get pretty crazy with it we can get pretty aggressive sorry crazy people uh and we're going to do our chrominance noise reduction i like it let's do that one more time let's get i can't even say aggressive anymore god who does that not offend? Let's get excited. Oh, no. There's a word. Anyway, let's do some more. More noise reduction, more chrominance noise reduction. Cool. I like that. Let's uh, drop back down here to this bottom layer that didn't get any noise reduction. We're going to turn the top layer off and we're going to come back in here to filter. We're going to boost the highlights and Oh, and sharpen this image just a little bit. So we'll go in here to the basic tab and we're going to boost the clarity. So that makes it just a little bit brighter. And then we can come in here to our detail tab and just sharpen it just a little bit. Bam. So let's point at our smooth layer here. Let's add a layer mask. We're going to come to the one below it and say control A to select all and control C to copy. We're going to point at the layer mask and hold down the alt key and click into it. Control V to paste that selection. It's going to come in black and white and then control I to invert that selection. Now we're going to come over here to image adjustment levels. And now we are going to adjust this histogram. And the areas, the higher signal areas that are darker will not receive any noise reduction. The areas that are whiter will. So it's just balancing these two. Yeah, right about, oops. Right about there. Click OK. Right click on the image. Merge down. Ooh, sign. Select, deselect. Man, oh man. Give me the shimmies. All right, so let's go over here to our, actually, let's create a copy. Let's go over here to our stars. Control A to select all, Control C to copy. Go back to the image. Control V to paste. <laughs> And we're going to go over here. We're going to change the blending mode to screen. Boom. I like it. So what we've done there by that process uh, is really brought our nebula forward. We've put the stars back in. We're going to do a little bit more to create some more depth and push those stars back even further. Farther or further? You decide. Uh, okay. Uh, so with that layer selected, we're going to come in here to filter noise, dust and scratches. Ha uh ha. -huh. Just moving around. When you move this little preview box around, I can back out just a little bit. You see how there's my stars when I'm moving it. This is the stars as they should be. When I let it go, that's how much it's taking them out. So let's be not as aggressive. We just want to tone it down a little bit. See that? Look okay to that. Ooh, sun, that looks good. All right, and then let's come down here to the um, nebula image. 
we're going to do a little curves adjustment on it to kind of counteract what the stars did. Ha ha ha! Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you can see, that's all we did. That's the only reason I kept this other, I made this copy so I can just kind of see what I'm, the comparison. All right, so let's merge that down. Let's come back in here to our star layer. Let's go to image adjustment levels. And let's brighten those stars up a little bit. Right about there. Click OK to that. Cool. Control A, Control C. Go back in here to the image. Control V. And now we're going to take our new nebulosity layer with our reduced stars and push it above it. So just dragged it up, drug it up, dragged it, drug it, dragged it up, dra I drug it up. Uh, past tense, Steve. And then now I want to take this brighter star layer that we just created and I also want to change its method to screen. I'm going to grab my eraser tool. I have the flow set at 100 because I'm just trying to put that star back in. Find a star, hit the erase tool, and bring it forward. And you can do this until your heart's content. When you're doing an image that isn't as, um, definitely want to grab that star up there. When you're doing an image that isn't as wide field, this is really noticeable. You could spend all day turning these stars back on and their full intensity. But we won't spend all day. All right, I'm done. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. I'm done. No, wait. Now I'm done. I just kind of brought some of those stars forward. So, man, I mean, boom. That's all I can say. Can I say boom? Boom. All right, so I want to come over here to layer and flatten image. If you try to merge those layers down, you get some garbage. You gotta flatten the image. All right, so come here to file, save, and let's go back in here to PixInsight. And we're gonna go file, open, and we're gonna open image 13. All right, so here's our image 13. Looking really good. Looking really good. I think I probably pushed some more data on the other one. I spent more time with it. But still, this is a great looking image for a video. Uh, so let's pull a luminance. We just clicked on this uh, extract C-I-E-L lab component. Created a luminance, which gets all of our high, highest signal areas. We're going to take that and apply that as a mask. Okay, right click on the image and say mask and show mask. And then let's do a preview. Where do we want to do a preview at? Let's do a preview right here. Grab that right there, like that. Yeah, man. Okay, uh, let's open up our uh, multi-scale linear transform. Let's reset the tool. We're gonna come to layer two here. We're gonna adjust the bias to 0 0.075. Uh, we're gonna do it on layer three. And layer two, we're gonna 0 0.050. And what this is, is now we're going to sharpen the image. And these are the three layers we're going to sharpen. And these are the amounts. Uh, so let's drag and drop. Ah, yeah. Not sure if you can see it on YouTube land, but worked really well. Sharpened up the star, sharpened up the nebula. Love it. Let's drag and drop and put it on the whole image. Groovy. And let's delete the preview and we're going to delete the mask. Cool. So that is how I take a wide field image. And I mean, look at the difference. Same data, exact same data. I just really, really, really de emphasized the stars, pushed them right back, almost, almost blended out some of the really fainter stars. Because this is a great image, but it's really flat. There's no depth to this image. 
and it really starts to go from a photo to uh, like anime artwork. Um, yeah. And it's just personal preference. You may look at that and go, dude, shut up. Do a video on something else. It looks awesome. Uh, and then, like I said, this was the one that I really worked on, spent some time, got a lot more of that nebula, but pretty much the same results. Um, got a really good image, really clean. And the veil complex is much more prominent. I like that word. Okay, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. Just a recap, especially in the wide field imaging recap. And I just enjoyed, I just enjoyed this result so much that I wanted to do a video about it. So, whatever. All right, uh, until next time, and there will be a next time, I promise. Clear skies and clear minds.